Hello and the warmest welcome to you on this episode of Business Africa. I am Afolake Uyiluyi. Coming up, a private Kenyan solar energy firm signs a 20-year power deal with state-run utility. Senegal invests in a project to support promotion of employment for youth and women. And OPEC and its allies say more investment is needed to guarantee oil supply. Just a few days ago, Kenya flagged off its first consignment of crude oil destined for export as part of the early oil pilot scheme. The Kenyan government is now making plans to boost its power output in the coming years as it has just signed a 40 megawatt power deal with a Kenyan independent power producer called Kenergy Renewables. The contract was spanned through 20 years in which the firm will supply Kenya's national distributor, Kenyan Power, with clean power generated from its plant. My KDB in Amalanga with the reports. A private Kenyan energy firm recently signed a 20-year deal to sell 40 megawatts from its solar plant to the East African nation state-run distributor. Chief Executive Ken Energy Renewers Klena Doha said they signed the agreement to sell the electricity to Kenyan Power at 0.08 US dollars. She said the company requires a letter of support from the government which will provide clarity on when the plant will become operational. Ken Energy has already invested more than two billion U.S. dollars in the early stages of development for the Rumuratia project in Lakipia County in northern Kenya. Kenya has an installed generating capacity of 2,370 megawatts and peak demand of about 1,770 megawatts. It relies heavily on renewables such as Gotama and hydropower, according to reports. In a similar vein, the East African nation recently commenced its first truck transport of crude oil from the oil-rich but landlocked northern region of Tukana to the port of Mombasa. President Uhuru Kenyatta said under the early oil pilot scheme, 2,000 will be transported to Mombasa by route for eventual shipment. According to him, Kenya will look to avoid the resource costs of so many other African nations adding that he hoped oil would become a major contributor to the country's economy. It's now time to speak with an infrastructure specialist with experience in public-private partnerships and project financing based in Kenya. Vishal Agawa is also the author of the book Give to Get, which focuses on rarely discussed challenges of business leadership. Mr. Agawa, welcome to the program. Pleasure, pleasure. Now, power supply is a major challenge in some African countries. Do you see renewable energy as a solution? You know, only one in 10 Africans across the continent actually have access to power. There are only, over 500 million Africans without electricity. And, and projections show that we're going to have that continue until 2040. 2040. So if you think about renewable energy, the problem with renewable energy is all around uh, scalability, uh, to have large amounts of it, uh, you know, put into uh, generation, to have a grid that's stable enough to be able to support it, and to have financing available to 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 uh, crystallize those projects. So, while I think it is a good long-term solution and a sustainable solution, I don't think it is today's demand fulfilling solution right so that's that's the that's the problem with what's happening with renewable energy versus the demand that we have government sometimes are not good managers from your 24 years experience as an investment banker do you think kenyan government would know better in managing this project if you kind of look at the history sort of you know government managing generation is is neither um necessary anymore with the great success of independent power uh, producers across the region um, in, in all African countries, let alone worldwide. So the, the history is that is not the best spent um, sort of resource from a government standpoint, right, in terms of managing these generation projects. And, and, and in fact, areas where government can be effective, which is fixing the transmission and distribution helping with the supply chain to get power projects going, the government 
for example, in the case of Lake Torquana, has has effectively failed. Right? So, uh, you know, to ask the government to manage an IPP is going backwards in my view. Still on energy, Kenyan government is set to make its first export of crude oil. Do you think this would become a major contributor to the country's economy? So we're talking about 600 million barrels of crude that's been discovered. To give you a sense, if that crude is uh, pumped out at rates um, like Saudi Arabia and other Middle Eastern countries, we have about 50-odd years worth of oil. So that's, uh, that's not... That's not a lot. Having said that, you're talking about maybe $90 billion worth of total impact to the economy, you know, over, so not quite $90 billion, but $9 billion shillings worth of impact annually to an economy that's about $90 billion shillings, right? So, you know, the Kenyan economy is between 85 and $90 billion shillings in terms of size, and if you have an annual contribution from, um, you know, from a, a crude production standpoint of about nine billion shillings, that's not a small contribution to our fiscal revenues as a country. So we should be excited about this. We should celebrate it and, and work very hard to build efficiency around around the sector. But this is not a very large um, findable. Well, thank you very much for those insights. Senegal invests in a project to support the promotion of employment for youth and women. Find out more after this break. Stick with us.